Okay, we're going to solve our little forecasting problem here, starting in cell F5. Insert function, average, choosing the first three demand values. Enter, and just drag it down. For trend analysis, let's first calculate the two constant values, intercept and slope starting with the intercept. Y's are the demand values, X's are the time periods. And we do the same thing for the slope. All the demand values and then the time periods. Great. Now Y equal to A plus BX. A Fix it in place. You can fix a certain cell by pressing F4 on the keyboard if you're using Windows or Command T if you're using Mac OS. So this is y equal to a plus b fix times x time period. And drag it down. For seasonality indices, let's first calculate the summer averages. Average choosing only the summer demands. Once again, you can use the keyboard, uh, you can press the control key if you're using Windows, or the command key if you're using Mac OS. We can drag it down one cell, and here we can take the average of the previous two uh, average values. Okay, summer average divided by total average, winter average divided by total average. We're going to then use VLOOKUP to move these values up there. Oh, so VLOOKUP lookup value table array fix the table array and column index number is 3. Great. Drag it down. For the outcome of seasonality analysis, it would be simply the outcome uh, of H2 multiplied by G2. Drag it down. For regression analysis, we also need to first calculate the constant values. Intercept. Ys are still demands. Axes are now economy, because we're using economy as the independent variable to predict demand values. Slope, same thing. Y equal to A plus BX. Fix plus B fix times X. And once again, the independent variable now is economy. Drag it down. And now we're going to calculate the uh, absolute forecasting errors. And we're going to start once again in period 4. So equal to ABS so that we can return the outcome to its absolute value. We take the forecast value and we compare it to the actual value. Similarly, a forecast, actual. Forecast, actual. Forecast, actual. We just need to drag them down, and this one as well. And now we can calculate the mean absolute deviation. The mean absolute deviation is calculated by averaging out the different forecasting errors. So, there we go. And there we go, we can drag it towards the right. We can see now that the smallest mean absolute deviation is associated with seasonality, indicating that this particular technique appears to be the most accurate for this data set. Let's complete the forecast, typing in the parameters. Period 7, year 4, it's going to be a summer. And let's drag everything down, just one more cell over here. We're going to presume that the uh, economy uh, would be pretty similar to what we have this period of time. And uh, let's presume that the economy is going to be doing a little bit better. So let's just type in 14. 
So then we have completed all of our forecasts. So basically, according to our analysis, uh, the most reliable forecast on the basis of these rather straightforward forecasting techniques would be uh, 138. And there is our answer.